Race number three of the Belgium Cyclocross Adventure and we are at Birnum for a national calendar race. The way I'd describe this for British viewers is basically the level of like national rounds in the UK. It's not UCI though, but these boys are pretty much professional. I'm in form A. As you can see from this shot here, everyone's pulling away and I'm only just turning the camera on. I had a nightmare start. So let's get underway and see this absolute shocker. I didn't realize they were about to say go. So I then was switching the camera on, hitting my Garmin, trying to clip in at an absolute shocker, but I didn't panic. It was a massive, massive field, loads of boys. And I knew I'd be able to close the gap down on this first, first little stretch here like I did. And I think I managed to move up a little bit through this section anyway, but I am in dead last right now, but I've managed to pick off a few riders there getting on the green section, green is grip, and I didn't even get chance. This race was a nightmare for me. I didn't even get chance to do a practice lap. So just here, I'm like, off, dismount, we're running for a little sandpit. Look, it is pure carnage. If you ain't rubbing, you ain't racing. And yet again, if you watch my last video, my remounts this last year were absolutely shocking. So goal number one is to massively, massively work on that. But look at that. Like, if you blink or leave a gap open, the Belgian boys will come straight past you. They know how to take a corner. They are at, look at this, absolutely full chap around this first bit. And this course was outrageous. I have not raced anything like this in my life. Look, same again, he's come up the inside, got me. We're basically about to come off this grass section in a minute, onto like a, a road that they'd closed off. We're basically about to cut across someone's front lawn they must have been devastated cut across someone's front lawn and then it comes down this road and into basically mountain bike single track i have never felt so under biked in my life and i've also never this is the fastest start to a cyclocross race i've ever encountered look it comes into a bottleneck here there's absolutely nowhere to overtake and when i say the belgians know how to get past watch this maneuver Bish, bash, bosh, see you later. A couple of places moved up. I'll take my hat off to you in yellow and black, lad. But this next bit, because I didn't know the course, I've let the wheel go a little bit here. And this was a monumental mistake because this next bit was full ponies, absolutely holding on for dear life. I think we get up to like probably close to 25 mile an hour along this muddy stretch. And I was absolutely giving it everything I had right now to close that gap down. The problem was, I was, look, we hit 25 mile an hour then. That is full gas in a cross race. The problem is, because I didn't know the course, I'm also thinking, if I get on their wheel, I don't know if there's a corner coming, but this was the fastest start to any cross race I've ever had, I think. It was just full gas. And they are basically professionals in this race. It was form A, and we go into this next section, and this was class. We go into like basically a mountain bike single track section. There is a canal to our right. Look, it's off and running straight away because it is single file. There was nowhere to overtake here. It was so important to get a good start, but your boy had an absolute stinker of a start. Look at this. I felt so underbiked. I was going down here and I thought if I get this wrong, on one of these corners. You're in the drink, mate. I thought, imagine going back to the missus. Bang, I ended up in the canal, but look, what are you doing, Georgie boy? You can't park there. I tried to ride that section, stacked it. That let the wheel go. And that was just story of my race. Like the dismounts and remounts, you have got to be on it on this race because there is so many dismounts, remounts. Look, you can see here, I've managed to close the gap down to the boys. Well, I've had to dismount and run again, but look how important it is to get a good remount. Look how much time they put into me here. So I'm still running at this point, bang, that's my remount. That is way too slow. As soon as you let that wheel go, you're then chasing, 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 and you know in a minute we go back into that single track. These are the only points where you can overtake. So if, you, if you're watching this and wondering what you need to work on skill-wise, I cannot recommend race starts, which you watched me cock up in this one, 
dismount, remount. They are so important. Obviously cornering as well. There'll be certain courses that have a lot of corners if you're losing a second a corner. Look at this downhill section here. Oh my, if you're in the, oh, if you get that wrong, you are straight in the drink. But we've dismounted probably five or six times in this first four minutes 50 and every time they've gapped me and I've had to chase back on and I am just burning matches. The elastic is about to break for me because I know that if I'm not bang on a wheel when we hit some of the fast sections, it's an absolute nightmare. Look at this, rooty, slippy, straight down, full gas. I'd like to hope, I wanna go back and do this race again. You'll see why I have an absolute nightmare at the end. Look at all those routes. But having raced a full season on the mountain bike, I really feel like I can make some massive gains on these, on these races, going down the single track and stuff like that. Last year, I just didn't have the confidence to press on. And look, you can see here I'm getting dropped. And part of it was not knowing the course. So I'd like to think if I get there a bit earlier, get a practice lap in, learn the course, I'll be, a, I'll be much faster around there. You just can't afford to go into these races blind because the standard of any Belgium race is just really high. They're really good racers. They're fast, they're powerful, and they're super, super skillful is what I learned. Like, if you leave the gap open, they take advantage. But this is basically the first lap. You can see I am in absolute no man's land now. You can see the boys ahead of me. They've pulled away. The race has completely gone. The, front of the, the boys at the front of this race they are professional. I'm putting it out there now. They've got to be professional. They were so fast. Even the rocket was like, I can't believe how fast they were going. And you know she's an animal. But this was basically the full lap. We went through a few few twists and turns. And then you go back onto like a cobbled cobbled start straight. I think, think it was cobbled anyway. You're in Belgium. It's got to be cobbled, isn't it? They love a cobbled road. But coming out, you saw the guys there on the left, they've dropped me, absolutely dispatched. And there was nothing I could do about it. Yes, yeah, so onto this, this bit was slippy as, where the mud had got onto the cobbles. So that was lap one, and I'm going to be honest, it was pretty much survival mode for me now. It was basically race over, because... I had been dispatched. There was a couple of people behind me, but not many, and it didn't feel great. My legs felt empty, and I, the one good thing was, though, I didn't give up. I carried on, and I was just like, you've come out here to have fun, race your bike, so give it all you can, and that is what I was doing. I was just working my absolute backside off to try and shut down the gap, and one good thing, look, I managed to ride that sand section, that your man's a sand expert now, that is the smallest sand pit ever compared to my first race out there, but I did manage to start improving on these single track sections, I, when there wasn't traffic, I was actually able to ride up these little climbs as well, which was really nice, and I did slowly, slowly, slowly get into the race and start... I could see a guy in front of me, and you could see that guy there on the start finish straight there, and I could slowly see that I was pulling people back and I was getting into the race. Look, I was actually shifting and moving at some speed through the single track, which was nice. And it was mainly because I was starting to learn the course. And I was getting used to the single track, getting used to the corners, the gears I needed to be in to get up these climbs. And I was slowly coming, clawing my way back into this race. We're what, 22 minutes in now, I've jumped forward, we're on the fast straight, and if you squint enough, you can see a rider just in front of me. And this was it, I was like, this is my chance to shine, to actually overtake someone in what has been a disastrous race from start to finish. And I could, I could see him every time I went around one of these corners. I was getting that little bit closer, a little bit closer, and you're getting all excited. And just round here, I think it's when I get my first, like, you'll get your first full glimpse. There he is at the top of the climb. And I was flying at this point. I was giving it full berries to get on his wheel. And I thought, as soon as I get there, I'm just going to keep pressing on. Go straight past him and see what I can do. See if I can catch the next rider, catch the next rider. And this is where it went completely disaster. Coming up here, I sprinted to try and catch. Caught that tree. Plop! 
You can't part there, Georgie boy. I'll go to get back up. You absolute numpty, George. I'll get back up. Why aren't I going any faster than that? Because I've realised I've just snapped my handlebars. That was literally the most pathetic fall I've ever done. And it snapped my handlebar clean in half. Absolute nightmare. So that was a disastrous race from start to finish for me. And it was race over. But I thought I'd still show it the highs, lows of Belgium cyclocross racing. And it was a wicked fun course that I definitely want to try again.